Okay, it's go time. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm so excited for today's show. Happy Monday, happy October. Uh, what a beautiful fall it has been in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. Let us know where you are coming from and what you are grateful for today. Uh, I wanna tell you about uh, the leaves outside. They are just spectacular. I think we are just hitting our peak in, um, in, in Colorado and in, in the mountains specifically beautiful, beautiful oranges and reds. And it's just, uh, it's just spectacular to look at. And it just makes me get into that mood of, of the fall weather. I'm really excited that we have Laura Peary with us today. Uh, Laura, welcome from the Steel Group, Sotheby's International Realty uh, in Richmond, Virginia. We are so, so happy to have you with us. Uh, welcome, good morning. Thank you, good morning, Melanie. Uh, you know, when we think about our gratitudes, there's so much to be grateful for in, in this life. And uh, I'm really excited about this week. One of my gratitudes is going to be able to spend it with Scenic Sotheby's International Realty in the Panhandle um, in Florida. So I'm going to be on the Emerald Coast and mm -hmm. I'm going to be with Blake Morar and Chris Abbott and their entire team, Wes Madden, and we are going to have an incredible week. We're also, this is a combination one, where they partnered with Atlanta Fine Home Sotheby's International Realty to do this specific installation with the two different teams. So really, really looking forward to this powerful week coming up. And Laura, I am so grateful for you. So, so grateful for you. You and I met uh, quite a few years ago at a Ninja installation, and we um, have stayed close ever since. So I'm really, really grateful for you. Tell us uh, what you're grateful for today. Well, I think we're kind of loving on the Sotheby's a little bit here, but, um, you know, I'm very, very grateful for our Sotheby's network and colleagues that have become really great friends already this morning. I've been in touch with four or five colleagues through text message, like on the West Coast, they get up at Odar Hundred, I guess, um, you know, they're texting back and, um, you know, just asking advice on this or that. And um, it's just kind of, it's just wonderful. And we're both coming out of, you know, come uh, being at the TNE &E in Austin. And it's just really wonderful to be able to see people in person and reconnect and just collaborate and, um, you know, just do what we love to do. The energy and the vibe at the Texas networking event was electric. It was, um, I just think there was so much love in the room. And if you have never been to a networking event, I, I, I strongly, strongly encourage you to do that and to plan ahead uh, when you do that. I do believe that we're going to have the registration for the uh, global networking event, which is gonna be April 24th to the 26th. And that's gonna be in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is time to keep your eyes open and listen for that registration because if it's anything like the Texas networking event or the One Summit or Level Up, it will sell out. So uh, plan for that and what a, what a great event that will be. You know, when we um, were in Texas, I had the opportunity to sit on a panel with you, Laura, and it was just so, so much pride and um, in the room of just uh, everybody that was in there embracing the Ninja selling system. And we talked about the Ninja effect. And one of your super master powers is really talking about um, what Ninja has meant to you and, and, and the processes. And we're going to get pretty deep into some really great information. But first, Laura, will you tell us a little bit more about the Steel Group Sotheby's International Realty, the market that you serve? Sure. So I am in Richmond, Virginia. Um, so I serve Richmond and the surrounding area, but I also have a niche market down in what's called the Northern Neck of Virginia. So it's a secondary home market. It's about anywhere from an hour to two hours away from Richmond. And um, I specialize in waterfront properties. Beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. I would imagine that the fall leaves in Virginia are just now starting to change. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, we've had a couple of brisk days and um, I just love, I love sweater weather. Sweater weather. That's exactly right. That's exactly what we are in right now. Is that is that sweater weather? I will tell you though that uh, um, this past uh, weekend I was um, driving on Vail Pass and also up by the tunnel, which is the Eisenhower Tunnel, and I hit snow three times already. 
the snow. So it is, it is coming. It hasn't hit, you know, right, you know, but the ski season, everybody gets really excited about the snow when it starts to fly a little bit early. And I think that it is going to, it's going to be starting to fly pretty soon. So a lot of frost on the grass this morning. So uh, it's coming. Winter is, is on its way. And in Colorado, we think that's a good thing. Uh, we like the snow and, and we like good snow years. So we're, we're hoping and doing our snow dances for a great, a great season. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your Ninja experience. Um, when, when, when was your first Ninja installation and where was your business at that time? And what, what has it meant to you? Um, my first installation was in January of 2019. And at that point, um, I was kind of, you know, on that gerbil wheel, sort of like trying to grow my business and sort of, um, you know, trying to keep everything in my head and making sure everything's done. I think I'd had an assistant maybe part-time, um, but I uh, went to the, uh, I think it, you were actually facilitating at Melanie and that's where we met. So um, I went to the Ninja um, installation and I was, I was just like, wow this is just totally what I need because it just made sense. It was the process. It was a mindset, which I feel like I you know, have a really a mindset of abundance. So it just really spoke to me and resonated with how I feel like I am as a person. And I was like, oh, I can, you know, just incorporate this great selling system and, and, you know, scale my business, which I was able to do. So um, after that, um, I took, I've been in two years now of mastery. Um, and you know, it's just been, it's just so great. Not only are you meeting wonderful colleagues, uh, across the brand, but just, just constantly, you know, being reminded of best practices and cadence for your business and, you know, what works and it really, you know, this stuff does work. Right. So, um, you know, I've just really very much enjoyed, um, the Ninja effect. It it has been working. It's been working really well for you. And I, um, I do know that it took effort, you know, for you to really put it all into place. So today, what we want to talk about really is about automation, delegation, and elimination. So let's start out with automation. Let's talk about your process. Um, why? Why this process? And why is it so important to you um, to have a process in place? Well, for me, it's actually important um, because I was uh, struck by a car when I was walking up from swimming one day at my club um, and was hit and fell on my back, although I was protected with my backpack, but I had whiplash and a head injury. My head cracked open. So, um, you know, I had many years of um, doctor's appointments and, you know, to all types of therapies to try to to sort of help mitigate some of my symptoms. And one of the kind of the permanent um, results from that is a, you know, I have a, a mild traumatic brain injury and um, some short-term memory problems. So I had to sort of develop a lot of compensatory strategies so that I could, you know, continue to grow my business and be successful. And so that's why these processes you know, we're just like a savior for me because I was able to just like put everything down on, on something outside of my head so that I could make sure that no critical tasks were left undone or I might forget something in the process. Um, but, you know, what I found is, you know, several years later, my um, ability um, to do what I do and grow my business and be, you know, one of the top producers at my brokerage has, has really relied on those processes, regardless of whether or not I'd had the brain injury or not. So I'm much more successful than I ever could have been had I not sort of been forced to like take the time to kind of go step by step by step um, about how I run my business, particularly with buyers and sellers. It's fascinating. It's <laughs> fascinating to, to see your processes and how deep you have taken them. Um, and an unexpected blessing, right? In a traumatic exactly. brain injury. I mean, it really is unexpected, but what it forced you to do was to become on purpose. So many of us have an opportunity to choose to be on purpose or be on accident and just go fly by night, you know, with our days and, and everything. But you really were in a place where if I'm going to make it in this business, if I'm going to really be successful in my life, I need some systems and processes um, in place. Absolutely. 
And then you needed to scale your business because what happened was you started to use the Ninja Selling System and TSW is working. You're putting your processes in place and talk to us about delegation. Um, Delegation is, is probably one of the hardest things for anybody who wants to grow their team. If you want to bring on an assistant, if you want to lead a company, if you want to be the owner of a company, if you want to um, be the, you know, really have multiple people on your team, delegation is key. What delegation means is that you have to be able to let go of the reins. And that's not easy. That's not easy. You really need to be able to share um, the workload. Uh, And that's really the whole reason why you bring on a team. So talk to us about why delegation was so important to you. And and you are such an amazing example of somebody who has really done this very, very effectively. Can you tell us a little bit more about your delegation systems? Sure, absolutely. So um, like I said, I've, I've got everything uh, through the years. I, <clears throat> my processes are very, um, they've gotten incredibly granular. So I put everything on a digital platform called uh, on a monday.com uh, board. And for me with my team, I've got an assistant and then a lead assist agent. Um, it's, um, you know, I think with delegation, it's really important to make sure you have a good training, um, you know, kind of an onboarding process for for people when they come uh, and join your team, you know, you need to hire smartly. Um, and um, so what I've done was is develop, uh, so Maris, my lead assist agent, when I got my new assistant, she trained her because she already, I had trained Maris. So, you know, that's kind of my thing. I'm not going to, I'm not planning to get very large, but if I had somebody else come on my team, I would have my assistant train that person, right? Because they all, the training is what I expect and it's just in a process, right? Um, so it makes the team more efficient, more effective, and it frees me up to do what I do best, which is to go grab new business. And speaking of control, um, I've spoken to so many agents, top agents, you know, mid-range agents who are just so hesitant because they feel like they're giving up control by delegating. But if I see it totally different. Um, I, I find like I, the control for me is in my processes. I've got every single detail written down and uh, tagged with an, who's accountable for it. So I'm really, I think I'm like Uber in control, right? So if anytime along the way, I can check and see where we are in the process, who has done something, who hasn't done something. Um, I don't have to remind somebody to do something because it's in the process. Um, so I feel like it's really given me a lot of control um, and so, you know, again, it allows me to do what I do best and stay in my lane. It's it well, and it is, um, it's a gift. You did a mindset shift around that. And, and I want to go back to what you just said. You've talked to so many different agents who say that they're fearful of, they're fearful of delegation. They're fearful of it, but they won't do it as well as I will do it. If exactly. you find the right person and the right personality type, and you have it written down and you have the systems in place train them train them it works and and it's not and it's not that i ever step out totally from the process i mean i can always jump in wherever and say hey wait you you know you got to do this i mean when things were flying so fast the past couple years you know we'd get sellers uh home sold very quickly you know i just coached my team i was like we're not going to take a shortcut on our process just because it's under contract so quickly we need to still follow our process so i didn't you know i never let the team um, take shortcuts on that, even though things are moving so swiftly. And I think just that constant kind of management of expectations and, um, sort of how we do business is really important to, to, to stay on top of. It, um, it's like you're leading at a macro level. You're not getting into the minutia and double checking every single thing, you know, as a, a micromanager, but it is, you know, it's imperative that they understand this is the process. This is the way that we will do it. And these are our systems. And then you know what this means to your, um, to your team, they feel free. They feel free because they know what their one, their job role is right. Um, they also understand more about what it is that they need to do, but they also know that they're part of your well-oiled machine. And Absolutely. it is, uh, it's working so well. So if you are thinking about, Uh, bringing on a team member. If you are thinking about bringing on that assistant, really, really would encourage you to take this to heart and just to understand how important it is um, 
to really have the system in place so that they understand, you know, how, you know, what the processes are, and then just you can manage from that macro level. And, you know, as, as a leader, it's just so, so important. Elimination. Elimination is um, is going to be key and very, very effective. Uh, and it has been for you too, Laura. When we think about the automation of tools um, and your team cadence, can you speak to some of the different things that uh, elimination, why elimination has been important? Well, team redundancies, right? So with elimination, um, so in my process, I'm able to tag each uh, step to a person, one of the three of us, right? Or sometimes two of us are doing it. You're not duplicating, right? Exactly. And so, so again, it's that whole expect expectancy thing of, of, of and it, it, I think it mitigates anxiety for everybody like, oh, did I forget to do something or what? Oh, no, let me go back to the board and see, you know, whose responsibility that was. So, you know, I think that, that, um, that the redundancies is, is important. Um, also, we do a lot of um, tool, uh, we like basically let's just call it quality control right very rarely I go um, and we go through all of our processes and tools that we're using in our business and we just sort of say hey is this still working for us are we really getting the maximum value out of this do we maybe need to eliminate that subscription you know how, so we're con you know I like change so I think this is you know maybe why I, I one of the reasons I embrace it so well because I, I I'm into continual improvement and I think that you know some things that might have worked a couple years ago maybe they don't work as well now or maybe you know some of us are just like oh like they go to the shiny and bright something that somebody told them they should subscribe to and then they end up not ever using it like I'm guilty of that so we're constantly you know looking at my my spend on my business and what tools are are effective and what you know need to maybe be eliminated and and it's working it really is working for you you also just touched on you know really looking at you know how are we evolving right our markets are always shifting the markets are changing uh, right now what we're seeing is we're starting to come back into a 2019 ish market you know really looking at where where um those systems have been and they needed to change right when we were in you know 2020 2020 21 you know looking back but really right now this conversation is more imperative to have your systems in place because we do know that inventory is starting to open up and why wouldn't it be us that has our name on that beautiful Sotheby's International Realty sign uh, so we can have these systems in place to do that so you are also making Making sure that you're not duplicating roles, right? You know who's on first and you know who's responsible for this. And then just really looking at the redundancies, like does it work? Um, that is all part of automation, right? So if we go into sure. like thinking about the automation of your tools as well, uh, talk to us about like when, you know, what tools, what apps are you using? When do you meet with your team? Um, how, how does your, how does that operate with, with your systems? Sure. So again, I've mentioned the monday.com board. We have that board that syncs certain items into my calendar um, so that I don't have to, you know, like, I, I don't want to have to like put something on the Monday board and then move over to my calendar and put it, you know, that's a, that's a efficiency piece. Um, we can pause right there real quick and get, go a little bit deeper on what this is. Cause I think a lot of people are going to be like, wait, 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 tell me more about what mon monday.com is. It's a it's a digital platform that you can um, house anything. I mean, we have our our buyers, our sellers, our our processes. Um, we have it's a subscription based um, program. Some people use the Trello board, which is I used to use, but I like the Monday.com program because you can. Um, it's a little bit easier when you're delegating tasks to assign tasks to people. Um, but it's just a you know, I'm happy to share it with anybody who, you know, wants to reach out to me. Um, but it, it's, it's just a way, it's a digital way that um, I can, you know, look at my processes and, and my clients and um, make sure I'm keeping in touch or doing what I need to be doing. And it syncs to your Google Calendar, correct? Yes, you can, you can have certain items syncing to your Google Calendar. Okay. So like when I have, so we've got, a section of our board for when they're showings for a listing so that those items I can have it sync to my calendar so I don't have to repeat that on my calendar as an example. 
Okay, that that's um, that's incredible. So that's yeah. going to help with that whole elimination piece as well. How yeah. about when when you meet, when you meet with your with your team? Well, we have a really great, I think, team cadence. I call it. Um, you know, and again, that's that whole to me when you're managing people, just the predict predictability. What you know, how they what they expect. You know, how we run our our business. And you know, um, on Monday morning we have a a quick check in. It doesn't have to be in person, but we're just sort of because we're with each other all the time, just like, hey, what's going on? Sort of, we call it a team huddle, um, uh, you know, anything major, just so, you know, life happens. And if somebody's having something critical going on in their lives, we need to understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have a more formal, uh, we call it a, and this is, you know, none of this I've created. I mean, I'm a great, you know, emulator, right? So you probably heard of a WAM meeting, which is a weekly action meeting. Um, we have that every Tuesday. And so that is where we kind of, um, on a Google slide, sort of like a PowerPoint type presentation, we have all these different slides about, you know, what's going on this week, current sellers, current buyers to do. So we just go through each, you know, active client and, and just, you know, make sure that, okay, this is closing on Thursday. What do we still need to do? So it's just, a, it's, it's what's going on this week. And then we also have a section where, you know, if we're doing an event in the future, um, you know, it's about, I don't know, six or eight slides that we go through and we, the, between the three of us, we make sure we're all on board. One with. thing that I really like that you did, that you're doing is that you chose a different day of the week. Um, so the, the Monday morning huddle, right? The team huddle, like, like who's on first, what do we, what do we have going on? That's a very quick um, yes. meeting, but then your wham is scheduled on a different day of the week. And why I think that that is so important to just kind of point out is because what we find is Mondays just get crazy. You know, we've yes. just come off of the weekend and if you are managing a team or if you're just looking at your business, um, I wish it was a five day, you know, week job. It's really a seven day week job in our business. Um, but what, by doing it and choosing a different day, it helps you to become more on purpose. You can take a look at where were we last week? What does this future week look like? Mm -hmm. And it really does keep that cadence, if you will, that you have. Um, how about after, after the transaction? Uh, talk to us about what, what the roles are and what happens after the, the transaction. Sure. Your relationships are so important to stay in touch. Absolutely. So we have, um, <clears throat> we are, and I, I talked about this a little bit in Austin, you know, that's one of the things we're really focusing on fleshing out, be it like, let's just say a more robust after action plan, calling it an RAP, a um, recurring action plan. And to sort of use Thomas's, Thomas Wright's words from when he spoke at the TNE, sort of doing a post-mortem, right? After every transaction, we meet, um, so we meet on the next WAM meeting. So let's say we close on something on a Thursday. That next Tuesday, as a group, we do a post-mortem, like debrief, basically, how did that closing go? What could have been done better? Are there any other uh, items that we need to add to our processes? I mean, I'm, I'm getting so micro granular with these process steps. It's invigorating, I guess. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the other, so that's kind of like internally with our team. But the other thing we do is we develop this RAP, this recurring action plan, moving from closing, you know, to we kind of flesh out the first year of the different touches that we are gonna do with this particular client. So some of them are gonna be the same. And then we have a few ad hoc items that it would be you know, specific to that particular client. And so that's posted on a, a post transaction board on monday.com and synced to the calendar as well. So it'll be on my calendar in one week that I need to you know, contact this person and then you know, whatever, whatever their action plan is, but it's on my calendar so that I don't forget and that, you know, they can constantly have, you know, touches and, you know, not be forgotten. It, it's amazing. Yeah. It, um, what I'm hearing you say that I can, I can see that uh, this could be daunting for some people that don't have the systems and processes in place so far. But if you think about this, it's just, it's a system so that you know who's on first this week. You're mm -hmm. not the on-accident agent who's going to the office and saying, oh, what do I have to do today? Um, it, it is always planning ahead and, and times with checklists and processes. Um, what can I eliminate? You know, we don't need to duplicate our efforts. Um, I don't need to recreate the wheel every single time I have a new transaction. It's the automation of your tools. It's going to be very, very important to think about 
if you do have a team that you have that those short meetings together and then really looking at your wham your weekly action meeting every single week um, and just uh, thinking about that the relationship starts truly truly starts at the end of the transaction and when we can start to focus on really building that relationship, what we know is referrals will come from that. It's so important to be able to stay in touch and be that proactive trusted advisor for them at that point. So that's just kind of a quick summary of what you have taken so deeply to heart um, and just you know learning from that process. What did I learn? What we, could we have done better? What did we not need to do? and you know, keep improving those systems. Let's talk about social media a little bit because we know that social media is just, uh, it's critical in the business, but it's also something that is a distraction. You know, that fear of missing out or always being on social media. How do you manage that? And how do you use that with uh, your clients? So with social media, I also have developed a cadence. Um, so again, I think it's important to have predictability. I think it's important to have um, I sort of break it into like a third, a third, a third. I try to at least, you know, a third business. People like to see about me and my chickens and my dog and where I'm, my new house, maybe. Um, and, you know, I have, uh, I post like when I sell things or when I list things. Um, and then just kind of other important um, things that are of interest to to me, but, but more so of interest maybe to people who are following me. So mm -hmm. in terms of the cadence, every Monday, I have a matchmaker Monday that's intended for buyers. Every win, every other, oh, I'm sorry, that's every other Monday. Every other Wednesday, um, I have what I call Wanderlust Wednesday, where I'm featuring some wow property from a Sotheby's International Relief colleague that just resonates with me. Um, every um, Friday, every other Friday, I have a, um, well, I'm sorry, that's not social media, but there is a lot of cadence in terms of my touches with people. You do um, a reel I on Thursdays, right? Don't you have a Thursday reel? I think it's a feature, yeah, a feature reel on a listing. Like right. I think I did one a couple of weeks yeah. ago just on these fabulous windows of this um, house that I have listed. So, and I am doing a lot more reels and I think that people um, really, you know, resonate with those, those reels. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure a lot of stats about video and reels and getting more, you know, followers, et cetera. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, when I, you know, I'm not a young chicken. So, we, you know, years ago when the thought of doing social media to, to grow my business was sort of like, eh, but I was, I leaned into it and, you know, I got a, um, I remember I had like a $3 million listing down in the waterfront. This was maybe in 2017 or 18, something like that, that, um, which is a big number down there and it was a friend of mine who I went to high school with hadn't seen her in 40 years but she was watching me on social media and she just called me up one day and she's like I like what you're doing I want you to list our our place I had no idea what the place was but then you know I found out um that it was this lovely waterfront property so you know I think with social media always people are always watching um think about the value add for the people watching not necessarily about how great you might be um, and then, you know, just be careful about sensitive subjects. Stay away from those. Yes, you can, you can uh, turn off a lot of viewers instantly if you, if you uh, don't pay attention to that, for sure. It's a, um, that's a really valid point. Yeah. Um, and then you also have just um, an, a system in place to when you reach out to your clients as well. Yes. So um, every, well, I do, let's see, every Monday they get the list track. If it's the seller, they get that list track automatically from Sotheby's, right? Then on every Tuesday with the seller, I give them a, a personal call, regardless of whether anything's happening or not. And then every other Friday, I do what I call a biweekly update, which sort of gives a summary. I do it through Active Pipe of all the things that have gone on in the past two weeks. And so those are all in place. And then of course, the in-between phone calls to let them know a showing or feedback, et cetera. But I've got these, you know, these um, benchmarks to make sure, because there could be a listing where I don't have a showing, you know, for several weeks and the seller is just sitting there. I'm going about my business, but from their perspective, they feel like I've forgotten them. So that's why I think it's really important mm -hmm. once a week to call them and talk to them, even if nothing's going on. And with my buyers, that weekly call is on Wednesdays. And, um, and then I do that matchmaker Monday kind of to help with buyers, um, you know, so you have got these buyers looking for these certain things. So, you know, it's, it's important, I think, again, to have a cadence. 
-hmm. and to sort of be really on purpose about how you want to um, treat your, your clients and how you want to, you know, best get their goals met. You know what I'm hearing too is that uh, you have the systems in place to enjoy your life. Yeah. You know, through the processes of, you know, just really focusing on the automation and the elimination yeah. and just really being able to um, probably sleep better at night as yeah. well, I would imagine. In closing, Laura, you know, I think we could go on and on. I want to learn so much more about this. I think it's, uh, you are a breath of fresh air, but what I really hope that people will take away is that by taking some time ahead to put your processes in place, um, everything starts to flow and it starts to go. What did it mean to you by putting your processes in place? Well, again, initially, you know, the driving force for me was my, the memory problem. Um, but I've found that just the constant management and refinement of the processes, you know, instead of just managing my business, it's really been a key factor for my, the growth of my business, you know, and, and I can, one of the things I'm trying to do is to help my team run our business rather than them helping me run the business. It's a little bit of a mind shift, right? So, you know, I think empowering them to be able to run the business, I can go to the T&E. &E. I think I talked to my assistant maybe once or twice. You know, it helps, it helps them, you know, again, they know what to expect because it's all written down and they understand the expectations. So um, it does allow me to have less stress and, you know, more personal time and, you know, time to travel and um, I, I can't say enough great things about it, doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Call me. I'll help you do it. I mean, it's just, I think the biggest thing is yourself getting in the way of starting. It is. It's get out of your own head, right? I've heard you say that a lot of times, yeah. just to, you know, get out of your own head and, and just uh, really have the systems going in a place. Uh, it is, it is exciting to see that uh, what the power of systems will do for you. And you are the prime leading shining example mm -hmm. of really living an on purpose life. And we're so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being our guest today. Everyone make it a great week. Here's my, my greatest advice for you too this week start this, start your system, start thinking about your Ninja nine and become on purpose, um, baby steps, you know, it, and build upon those, you know, as you grow, think about the fourth quarter right now, we are now entering our fourth quarter. We have a wonderful opportunity to finish strong. I want you to look at your numbers. Did you make your numbers? Um, and if you didn't, were they too lofty? We know that we had a market shift. Go back to what 2019 looked for you, it looked like for you. Are you in line with that? Is there three things that you could do to really um, be proud of what you did on a professional level in your business? And then also take three things um, that maybe you haven't yet completed on a personal level for your business plan for 2022 and see if you can make sure that you're time blocking and, and making sure that you accomplish those as well. And you're gonna put yourself into a great position to start strong for 2023. So everyone make it a, a great week and we look forward to seeing you next week laura thank you thank you so much and the best way to get in touch with you would be email address what is that uh it's a long one laura.peary at the steel group sir.com the steel group sir.com s-t-e-e-l-e -E -E. um so thank you everybody and we look forward to uh learning more from laura you, you'll be back thanks so much everybody thanks melanie